I'm taking advantage of electric while we have it and using the crock pot. We're gonna go on a hike and I'm gonna come home to dinner already done. You got your teddy bear. I was not crazy about this purchase. This thing is huge for us. <laughs> we usually buy very small stuffed animals and very small toys. And somehow Marissa came back with this bear that's yeah. This bear's about the size of Hensley. I told her daddy would be happy about it. Hensley does like it, but it's taking up a third of our couch and it seems like it's always in my way. You gonna put it on, Hensley? Up to that doctor's office, she already had a hike planned, so <laughs> she had me putting on my hiking shoes. So now that he's clear, we know he's got a great working heart. We're gonna go put it to work. Now. This hike is Hanging Lake. We've got so many recommendations to do this hike. It's one of the reasons we even stopped in Glenwood Spring. Somebody asked if all we did in Colorado was hike, and I, I think that's what you do when you can't ski. <laughs> yeah. Instead of instead of skiing the mountain, you pack the mountains. So. There was construction going on at the exit, so we couldn't get off the exit. When we passed, had to pass up the exit, we had no cell service, so we didn't have any GPS to know where we're going. So now somehow we ended up, we were only about 16 minutes away. And now by the time we've got service, it says we're another 16 minutes away. We're just hoping we can get to it. It's something to think about when you leave. I'm sure it's not a bad idea to know how to, <laughs> to have a regular map with you as well, which we don't. There's definitely spots where you, you know, think you're going to have service and you don't. And if you don't have service, you can't pull up the maps with Google. I did read that you need to get here really early. They say the parking lot fills up by like 9 o'clock in the morning. So if you're not there before then, then it's really hard to get a parking spot. But we just couldn't make it out here until the afternoon time. So I'm hoping something will open up. I read you just kind of circle around until something opens up, so <laughs> that sounds fun. Okay, so wasn't construction. <laughs> that was not the reason we could not get off the exit. We actually finally drove around until we found a rest area and ran into a ranger and asked her what was going on and she said it was so busy at Hanging Lake that it got dangerous and they had to close it off. She said cars were lined up so deep that it was starting to stick out to the interstate. Looks like uh, we're gonna go back home. I've never seen somebody like block the ramp off the interstate to keep you from getting to something you want to see. That went really well. That was about two hours of driving around for nothing. <laughs> This is why we, on the weekends, Saturday, Sundays, we try to just hang out at the RV. It's just, it's not worth it sometimes. You would think that like just a lake where you go and you hang around, yeah, you could drive up and hike and stuff, but that didn't happen. I'm gonna talk about five RV and gadgets that we use that are really handy that you can get for five bucks or less. Do you know any RV and gadgets for five bucks or less that we... Yep, yeah, RV, okay. Let's check out the gadgets. Gadget number one is Velcro. I met a full-time RVer um, who'd been RVing for over 10 years, and so I always just ask him, is there just you know some stuff I can learn? And he said, always carry Velcro. He showed me where he Velcroed his ladder to the back of the RV. I use Velcro to wrap our hose. This is actually a 30-foot hose, which is pretty long and pretty annoying sometimes. I just roll it up and Velcro what I don't need. I also Velcro the bikes to keep the tires from rotating and the bikes from shaking quite so much. 
And the other thing I use Velcro mainly for is just like wires, um, cables, that kind of thing. I'll Velcro those together just to get them out of the way. Number two, this Gorilla Tape. I'll include duct tape with this, but duct tape's kind of the obvious one. And I'm pretty cheap, so I usually just always bought duct tape. But man, if you want something with a little bit more of a grip that sticks to everything, this black Gorilla Tape is awesome. <laughs> if you watched our washer dryer video <laughs> with our dryer vent in the back, that I could not reach to save my life. And yes, maybe this shelf comes off, but I just haven't taken the time to take all that off. So temporarily, I've got the vent in the back taped to the washer dryer combo unit using the black Gorilla Tape. The vent's not going anywhere. I actually made this before I had the Gorilla Tape, but this is with duct tape. We made these, um, these like wedges. These doors, if you buy an RV with sliding doors, I wouldn't doubt this is a problem with any of them. In theory, they're only supposed to open when you push this button down, but that is not how it works. Like when we go down the road, it doesn't even latch, I don't think, but we use these to wedge these doors. We've got one door here, another door back in the back. And I'm sure there's tons of other use for duct tape, Gorilla Tape, but basically if you just need something to stick, that Gorilla Tape is a step above the duct tape and it's worth the extra money, in my opinion. So this is number three. Almost every time we start a fire, I cheat. Yeah, you can use dryer lint. Yeah, you can find small twigs, pine cone needles. Any number of things could possibly start a fire, but, and this is a larger box, you could probably get a smaller box for around five bucks. <laughs> These things are awesome. So command hooks. We have no shortage of command hooks in our RV. We use several up here for hanging our keys. We use them for hanging towels in the bathroom. I mean, you can use command hooks just about anywhere you want in the RV. They're definitely awesome to have, and it's one thing you're gonna see a lot in RVs that people use when it comes to organizing and having ways to hang things in their RV. Last but not least is a WD-40 dry lube. I mean, it's different than standard WD-40. It's not as much water-based, and at the same time, it's not gonna attract dirt and grime like a lot of uh, grease and things like that would. Like, I'll use it on the bicycles. Um, I'll also use it on our hydraulic jacks. They do extend very fast, but as far as retracting, a couple of them don't retract super fast. And I found that if I use this on them for lubrication, they do retract a whole lot faster, you know, about every, I don't know, a month or two or something. Um, I'll put those on the hydraulic jacks and they seem to do better. I know there's some debate on the hydraulic jacks, whether or not you're supposed to use anything on them or not but it's made a significant difference and I feel pretty confident it hasn't you know, hurt the jacks in any way. I've heard people use it on slide mechanisms, things like that. Just basically anything that moves and might have some sort of friction to it, you can, um, you know, this is something you can use on things like that. So really handy to have around the RV uh, as opposed, which I also have that too, but grease and WD-40, but there's you know places I'll use this that I wouldn't use the other stuff. I'm gonna walk around with a, with a squirt, see if we can find a better vantage point around here. These RV sites are on a pretty steep ledge all around. There's only like one group of RVs down here that you know actually has a decent view. Hensley, let's go. Let's keep getting higher. It's starting to look a little better. Yeah, it's uh, it's beautiful up here. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a bummer we didn't get to Hanging Lake today, but I, I know we're gonna go back. I know we'll get there. We just gotta manage the crowd. You know, whether it's duct tape or Velcro or just tiny little things you learn to do all on the road, um, we're learning something new all the time. Hey, what are you doing? Hey. I mean, everything's a learning experience. It's, it's all about the journey.